Hi, and welcome to my channel. If you're new to the channel, my name is Kate. I'm an integrative relational psychotherapist, a life coach, a yoga instructor, and an author. If you would like to schedule an individual online session with me, you can find all of the relevant information on my webpage. And I would also invite you to subscribe to this channel and to follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Now, let's delve into today's topic, which will be, as you can probably guess from the title of this video, borderlines. Who are borderlines? What are their characteristics? Are borderlines the same as bipolars? Definitely not. So let's start with this last question. Are borderlines and bipolars the same? The answer is clearly no. But many people in the general population tend to confuse the two. Why? Well, because they have one trait in common, which is emotional instability. However, borderlines usually have a borderline personality disorder. And even not all of them have a disorder, but more about that in a few minutes. Bipolars suffer from a bipolar disorder, which is a mental health condition. And bipolar disorder is characterized by extreme emotional highs and lows. So bipolar people tend to experience either very strong emotions, they are very high emotionally, meaning that they experience mania or hypomania, and then they get slammed to the ground and start experiencing depression. So they're oscillating between manic episodes and depressive episodes, and these episodes tend to last for quite a long period of time. Whereas borderlines, who are also characterized by emotional instability, do not go to such extremes. Yes, they can shift emotions very rapidly, they change moods very swiftly, they can go from being super happy to being depressed, but it's not as severe and as strong as it is with bipolars. And also, these mood swings do not last for such a long period of time as they do with bipolars. So I hope we have this sorted out. Now, what are the characteristics of borderlines? Do all borderlines have a personality disorder? The answer is no. Like I've tried to explain in my videos on narcissists, not every narcissist has a narcissistic personality disorder even if that person exhibits one or two or several narcissistic traits or characteristics. They're always on a spectrum, and the same applies to borderlines. Some people just have a borderline structure, but do not necessarily have a personality disorder. So let's go through the DSM categorization of the personality disorder. So which are the characteristics that have to be fulfilled by a person if we want to label that person as somebody who has a borderline personality disorder. Now, mind you, when we are assessing if somebody is suffering from a disorder, we are assessing if the characteristics, so their emotion, cognition, and behavior is persistent through a longer period of time. So it has to be present through a longer period of time and in different contexts. If somebody acts out every now and then or has just one borderline trait that is exhibited every now and then and not even in a vast array of situations, then that person is most definitely not a borderline, even though the characteristic that person has is disruptive to the borderline person and to the environment and the other people the borderline interacts with. So what are the typical characteristics of a borderline person, somebody who has a borderline personality disorder? Now, mind you, when it comes to people who have a personality disorder, their behavior, emotion, and cognition, 
so how they experience emotion, how they think, how they act, has to be persistent. So it has to be their almost characteristical trait. And for borderlines, it is typical that they have a pervasive pattern, as we say, of instability, especially in interpersonal relations. So if you've ever been in a relationship with a borderline, then you know what I'm talking about. If you have no idea what borderlines are like, and you will now learn more about them, I'm sure that you will discover you have at least one borderline person in your immediate circle of friends or family. Maybe you're even in a relationship with a borderline, but you just didn't know that you were because you couldn't put a label on a specific behavior. I don't like to label people. I use this um, diagnostic criteria only to get a frame of reference to better understand what I can expect from an individual and to be better able to help the individual because I know which traits are sort of attributed to a person who has a specific diagnosis. But diagnoses are not forever. Even if you've been diagnosed with a borderline personality disorder, it doesn't mean that you will necessarily be a borderline forever. So, like we said, borderlines are very unstable in their interpersonal relationships, be them intimate or professional or friendly. They also have a pervasive pattern of instability when it comes to self-image, when it comes to affect, so how they experience and express emotions. They also have this marked compulsivity and these symptoms or these traits begin to appear by early adulthood and are present in a variety of contexts. And if we want to diagnose someone with a personality disorder, then that person has to fulfill five of the following nine conditions, at least five. So what's typical for borderlines is that they engage in this frantic efforts to avoid real or imagined abandonment. So borderlines have this horrible fear of being abandoned. And more often than not, they are afraid of the imagined abandonment. That is why in personal relationships, they frequently provoke a situation where the partner says to them, well, I'm fed up, I'm not putting up with this anymore, I'm leaving you. Because borderlines prefer to provoke the abandonment than to be abandoned by the other person. At the same time, they also want to prevent this abandonment, which is somehow a paradox, because they truly fear that other people will just leave them. And... Borderlines perceive as a threat of being abandoned even the slightest mishaps. For example, if you're late for a date or if you cancel vacations for an objective reason, borderline will understand your behavior as you want to leave me, you are going to abandon me, and now I'm going to do everything in my power to prevent that from happening. Like we said, borderlines also have a persistent pattern of unstable and intense interpersonal relationships. And in their interpersonal relationships, they frequently alternate between idealization and devaluation. And I can tell you that in therapy, this particular trait is very much present. And it can be devastating for a therapist because it's quite difficult to work with someone who idealizes you during one session and then the following session devalues you completely. But it's typical of them and they do that in interpersonal relationships as well, especially when you disappoint them as a friend, as a partner, as a parent, they will immediately attack you on a personal level. 
they will find your weak spots and they will poke into what hurts the most. And you will fall from the pedestal upon which they have set you. And it's quite confusing to be in a relationship with someone who is shifting the mood so incredibly swiftly for no apparent reason. One day your borderline is madly in love with you and the following day your borderline wants to divorce you for no reason at all. Another typical characteristic of borderlines is that they have what we call identity disturbance. They have a very unstable self-image or the sense of self. You know probably that narcissists change their narcissistic mask depending on who they are interacting with. Borderlines, in a way, take over the identity or the beliefs of the people who are close to them. And they sort of tend to model their self-image and their personality to what they think other people want and expect from them in order not to abandon them. That's why even in therapy, borderlines present differently and they are quite a challenge to work with. They're very interesting, but they're also quite a challenge to work with because sometimes when a borderline comes to therapy, I indeed have the impression that I'm working with a completely different person than I was working with the previous week, for example. Because borderlines have such a strong fear of abandonment, they will tend to do literally whatever it takes to prevent you from leaving them. So if you are in a romantic relationship with a borderline and you've gotten fed up with these mood swings and aggressive behavior, and you tell your borderline that you will be leaving them, they panic. And in that panic, they really go to extremes in order to keep you in the relationship. They often threaten suicide, they engage in suicidal behavior, they self-harm, and the point of that behavior is to prevent you from leaving them. And even when you have no intention of leaving them, Borderlines somehow believe uh, in a moment when they're experiencing some kind of a distress that you will abandon them. That's the imagined abandonment. And even when they are in this imagined abandonment mood, they will threaten suicide or self-harming behavior and the like. That's why they are extremely difficult to be in a relationship with. And it's even more difficult to break up a relationship with a borderline. Affective instability is also typical for borderlines. And these mood swings that they have are exhausting for themselves and also for the people around them. Because borderlines can be cheerful and happy and excited about something one minute and then the next minute they will be depressed and sad and panicky and it's literally almost impossible to recognize that person because a minute before you've been dealing with someone completely different. The difference, for example, between borderlines and bipolars when it comes to this affective instability is that in borderlines, the instability passes rather quickly, within hours, sometimes within days. Whereas in bipolar people, it drags on for several months. Borderlines also tend to experience a lot of emptiness. They suffer from chronic emptiness. That's why they always need someone to be there by their side. They need to have this sense of security. And security is usually provided by people around them, most often by their intimate partners. And because they are suffering from chronic depression and anxiety, and these chronic feelings of emptiness, they tend to cling to their intimate partners or friends. And that too can be exhausting for 
all of those who are in any kind of a relationship with a borderline. Another quite um, obvious trait of borderlines is their incapacity to manage anger. If there is one emotion that borderlines are completely incapable of dealing with is anger. They have this huge anger outbursts. They terrify you when they are angry because they go to extremes. Usually, these strong feelings of rage appear when they start experiencing a lot of anxiety or when they are overwhelmed by the fear of abandonment. So, whenever borderlines are insecure, and usually they are insecure when they fear that you are going to leave them, they engage in self-harming behavior of different kinds, they start threatening suicide, and they tend to get very, very angry. If you've ever seen an angry borderline, you know what I'm talking about. And another trait that is also quite common among borderlines is this transient stress-related paranoid ideation or sometimes severe dissociative symptoms. When borderlines are under a lot of stress, they tend to imagine the absolute worst thing happening to them. They have a lot of negative scenarios that they continue playing out in their heads. And that's when they also start clinging to other people. They start imagining the potential abandonment. They start behaving inappropriately. They begin to have these angry outbursts and they can be quite accusatory of you as well. So all of the negative traits come to the surface whenever they feel threatened. And usually they are threatened by perceived abandonment. And this paranoid ideation, it doesn't mean that they are paranoid per se. No, this paranoia is mostly related to the imagined abandonment. For example, if you're late for your date, your borderline will immediately start thinking, is he having, is she having an affair? Is he or she going to leave me? Now I have to do everything in my power to prevent that. So, if a person fulfills at least five of these nine criteria, then that person has a personality disorder. Yet, you can also be dealing with someone who is just exhibiting some of the very disruptive borderline traits. For example, intense mood swings, um, self-harming behavior, um, threats with suicide, or being too clingy because of the fear of abandonment, and rage, of course. Rage, I think, is the trait that most people have difficulties dealing with. Even in therapy, it's quite unpleasant when borderlines go into one of their rages, but in therapy, we have to deal with that, and we're sort of trained to deal with that. In interpersonal relationships, it's very difficult, it's very challenging to handle a person who flies off to handle for no apparent reason. So, these would be the main characteristics of borderlines. I'm sure that having listened to this video, you now have at least an inclination that somebody in your immediate environment is borderline, perhaps has a borderline personality disorder. What borderlines need the most, if you are in any kind of a relationship with them, is stability. They need stability more than they need the air that they breathe. They have to have a stable, reliable person next to them. And if you are in a relationship with a borderline, then be careful not to be drawn into the borderline games, because borderlines are very skilled at provoking an argument, especially when they suffer from the fear of abandonment. In that situation, they will do whatever it takes 
to elicit a reaction from you confirming them that you will not leave them and that you will love them. Borderlines need a lot of stability, someone to who provides them with security, someone who is offering them a lot of love and understanding. I know it's difficult if you are in a relationship with a borderline to provide all that, especially when your borderline is behaving horribly. Yet, if you want to stabilize your borderline, then you just need to be there. Do not do much, do not try to save them, do not get into an argument with them, do not try to persuade them into something they don't want to do or don't want to believe. So, I hope this video was useful to you, at least in some ways, that it opened your eyes to the borderline world. It's difficult to be a borderline. It's not pleasant, um, but, you know, it's not doomed if you are in a relationship with a borderline. Or even if you are a borderline, it doesn't mean that you cannot change. Everybody can change if they are willing to, and this applies in particular to personality disorders. So, thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, of course, feel free to send me an email or you can also write in the comment box under this video. And in one of my next videos, I will be talking about what to do if you are a borderline. How can you make your life easier? So, stay tuned, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you soon. Bye.